challenges, in our opinion, seem to have overwhelmed our security institutions. The governors are supposed to be the state security officers of their state. There is need for us to at least engage the traditional workers. We need to do something about our porous borders. We have to run it from the unit level to the world level to the local government to say, Mr. President, the importance of today for us is for us to take action. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have been. Our economy may not take this shock. Senate worries over new CBN monetary withdrawal policy. Demands for further clarification. I will fight until our manifesto provides for our livestock subsector properly. Senate President calls for more support to the nation's livestock sector. This is Inside the Senate and I am Husayna Amina Aboki, your regular anchor. This episode of the program reviews proceedings in the Red Chamber where several bills were considered at second reading. One of such seeks to amend the Administration of Criminal Justice Bill. We shall also take reports from the Office of the Senate President where he was visited by the Minister of Agriculture alongside members of the Veterinary Doctors Association of Nigeria. Details of these and more coming your way after this short break. Don't go away. The Senate will send a message to the President to reap opportunities from that Today is a matter of urgent public importance. And we are aware that when this particular motion comes up, for a longer term development, arise to second the motion. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Welcome back. Several bills were considered for second reading on Wednesday, the 7th of December 2022. One of them, sponsored by Senator Chukuka Utazi, entitled Administration of Criminal Justice Act Amendment Bill 2022, sought an amendment to the recently passed version of the bill to enforce the presumption of innocence of an accused person pending the determination of a valid appeal against the ruling of a court of first instance. The sponsor spoke further on the value of the amendment. The value of the amendment is great. The benefits are also immeasurable because the benefits of a system is in the intrinsic value and is in, in its potential and potency to deliver intended outcomes to the citizenry. Well, as we speak now, some of our colleagues are languishing in, in prison while their bail applications are pending. The question I have often asked myself, for which I have not been able to provide any answer is, what about if, if they are conviction is set aside by the Supreme Court of the land. What happens to the number of years that they have, must have suffered in prison? And a conviction by one court below is not sufficient for you to keep a person in prison. This is very desirable because in so many cases, people have been convicted from the lower courts, and then by the time they appeal, and the appeal are upheld, you will see that they have already suffered some consequences of the first action that the, the lower court did. So I think there is need for this chamber to look at it very seriously. However, one of the senators calls for caution in the consideration of the bill. At the time somebody is convicted, the presumption is that you are guilty. Now, if you bring about a situation where convicted people are unleashed on society, of course, at the end of the day, some may be innocent. But if you make it a matter of law that innocent, I mean, convicted people are unleashed on the society, I assure you that a lot of them will just uh, disappear into thin air after the conviction. Because before, before conviction, you know, they, they, they may think that, okay, at the end of the trial, they may, uh, you know, uh, escape. So we have to be very careful in the way we trade with this bill. 
Even then, the bill scaled second reading and was referred to the Committee on Judiciary to report back in four weeks. Same day, the Senate considered the Nigerian Atomic Energy Commission Act 2004, Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2022, sponsored by Senator Emmanuel Okejev. According to the sponsor, the bill seeks, amongst other things, to develop and deploy atomic energy for peaceful uses and socio-economic development of Nigeria. The objectives of the B are, one, to develop the ways and technical machinery to effectively explore, exploit and harness atomic energy for peaceful applications for sustainable national development. Two, to build a world-class institution for the development and peaceful deployment of nuclear technology in all its ramifications for national development in conformity with international best practices. It will be good for us as a developing nation to focus on perhaps some specifics like the use of nuclear technology to support our food security effort. And I say so because nuclear technology is used to enhance preservation. The bill was read a second time and referred to the Committee on Science and Technology to report back in four weeks. Earlier on Tuesday, the 6th of December 2022, the Senate considered the National Social Investment Agency Establishment Bill 2022 at second reading. An executive bill, it seeks the establishment of an agency for the management and implementation of the National Social Investment Program, NSIP, which itself is a social support program under the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. He added that the program, which is aimed at reducing poverty, ensuring education, health, social inclusion, has recorded the following achievements since its establishment in 2016. Some of which are establishing the NPower scheme, which has empowered 1 million youths with additional 500,000 undergoing training all over the country. Establishment of the National Homegrown School Feeding Program, which is currently feeding over 9.8 million children nationwide, as well as the establishment of the Government Enterprises and Empowerment Program, GEEP, from which 2.424 million Nigerians have accessed non-interest loans under schemes like trader money, market money and farmer money, amongst others. He then spoke on the objective of the bill and what its passage would mean to the programs listed above, even after the tenure of this administration. The objective of the NSIP establishment bill is to provide a statutory and institutional framework for implementation of the National Social Investment Program, NSIP. The passage of this bill will ensure continuity and sustainability of NSIP as a reliable tool to solve poverty problems in Nigeria. Senators contributed in support of the bill. I first of all want to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for at last trying to codify the social investment uh, program. And I believe, sir, that if this program is institutionalized, it will be easier even for us to monitor the performance of this program in our various uh, constituencies. I want to align myself to this wonderful bill. Mr. President, the hardship is just horrible. And so this particular bill attempts to cushion what people are going through. My only concern is the fact that uh, we have uh, mixed up the grant component of the social investment programs with the loan component, and I think that is creating some confusion. Under one roof, Mr. President, you are giving people 10,000, 20,000 unconditionally, and then under the JEEP programs, you are also giving a loan. The likelihood, Mr. President, is that most of these loans will, be, will not be repaid. I think this law should also take care of that. The bill therefore scaled second reading and referred to the Senate Committee on Special Duties to report back in two weeks. Still on that Tuesday, the Senate also considered the Federal Produce Inspection Service Act 2004 Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2022 for second reading. 
The bill, which was first read on Tuesday, the 29th of November 2022, is seeking the repeal of the Principal Act, which covers only Lagos, and the reenactment of the new Act, fashioned to cover the whole of the nation. The main objective is to provide for imports into and exports from Nigeria at ports of shipment. According to the Senate leader who led the debate on the bill, it is also seeking the establishment of more laboratories in all of the nation's geopolitical zones, in addition to the one in Lagos, for the purpose of microbial analysis of agro-produce. The justification for this bill is primarily of the need to have an all-income person produce inspection regime in Nigeria that is capable of ensuring best practices in the export of produce from Nigeria. The objectives of this bill are as follows. Enforce grades and quality standards of produce commodities for export before shipment. Two, monitor and inspect produce and the commodities for export before shipment. Most of the local foods that are produced in Nigeria are destroyed, decayed, and not protected. This bill will also help us not only in the production of goods, but also making sure that most of the food that we produce will be utilized by us. With this, the bill scaled second reading and referred to the Committee on Trade and Investment to report back in two weeks. Let's now take a short break for our notebook segment. Don't go away. Oversight is one of the major duties of the legislature as provided for in sections 81, 82 and 88 of the 1999 constitution as amended and the Senate standing rules. These sections empower the Senate to scrutinize public funds entrusted to the ministries, departments and agencies as well as investigate them. Oversight is conducted by committees of the Senate over ministries, departments and agencies that come under their supervision. The committees perform their oversight duties through site visits, investigations and public hearings, among others. The program is Inside the Senate, bringing you reports of activities within and outside the Senate chamber. Wednesday, the 7th of December 2022, saw the chairman of the Senate Public Accounts Committee, Senator Matthew Urogide, lamenting the refusal of more than 100 heads of ministries, departments, and agencies to appear before the committee to account for monies appropriated to them since 2015. Details of the Senate's consideration of this matter, alongside others, is contained in our next report as compiled and presented from our studio. This MDS, Mr. President. In a motion under personal explanation, Senator Matthew Rogide explained that refusal of the MDAs to account for monies appropriated to them is in contravention of the provisions of sections 88 and 89 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This MDS, Mr. President, I want to remind us that we are empowered by section 88 and section 89 of the Constitution to summon them, even if that will be by way of issuing a warrant that will compel them, signed by you, so that they can appear before our committee and give account of what they are spending on behalf of the members of the public of our country. Even as matters under personal explanation are not open to debate, the Senate President himself, a former chairman of the committee, gave the position of the parliament on the matter. Any public officer who accepts to serve and utilizes public fund appropriated by the National Assembly must be prepared to account before the National Assembly. And any officer who feels he or she is above the law, should quit. Moving on, the Senate considered the Federal Inland Revenue Act Amendment Bill 2022. Sponsor of the bill, Senator Yahya Abdullahi, who presented it for second reading, gave some of the objectives of the bill as being to address revenue leakages alongside the loss of over 6 trillion naira, occasioned by uninterrogated tax and import duty waivers alongside petrol subsidy. He disclosed information showing that more than 90% of Nigeria's revenue are consumed by debt service due to public debt 
to finance huge budget deficit. The overall intent of this amendment bill, therefore, is to ensure that government is able to pull all its collectibles in one coffer, to be able to target its allocations to those areas of priority in the country. An effective way to do this is to reorganize the process of granting tax holidays, investment incentives and waivers to private individuals and corporate entities for effective coordination and transparency. He added that the bill also provides that all requests for tax and other waivers must be presented to the nation's legislature for scrutiny and approval. The bill was debated. This bill is timely. Whatever policy that should be uh, brought forward at every point in time, such policy should be examined in the first place. Is it in tune with our economic needs? Is it in tune with the zeal to boost our economy? If that is okay, then fine. Then proper examination should be done in order to find, to allow a company to benefit from such a, a, a policy. This is targeted at corporate entities. And we have been reading some very mind-boggling revelations about how tax waivers are dished out to multinationals in this country. I think the Senate should equally take a step further to look at what can be done to expand the province of the entertainment of this provision. After the debate, the bill was read second time and referred to the Committee on Finance to report back in four weeks. Same day, President Muhammad Buhari in a letter saw the confirmation of Mrs. Aisha Ndanusa Ahmad and Edward Adamu as deputy governors of the central bank for the second and final times. The letter generated reactions as lawmakers seized the opportunity to discuss the new monetary policy of the central bank of Nigeria on the amounts allowed to be withdrawn weekly by individuals and corporate organizations. Our economy may not take this shock and uh, as such, Mr. President, I want to say that uh, now that there is this uh, uh, there is the issue of uh, uh, screening of nominees from the CBN, I just thought that I should uh, speak about it so that uh, uh, Nigerians are aware and then let us look at what we need to do on this matter because people are suffering and it is a very, very serious issue, Mr. President. I will advise that these two deputy governors have been in the CBN for the last four or five years. So they are part of this system. This is supposed to constitute a major issue to be raised before them. Accordingly, the letter was referred to the Committee on Banking with a resolution to take up the matter with the nominees as well as raise a substantive motion on the issue. In a second letter, President Muhammadu Buhari also sought confirmation of Ambassador Ayuba Jacob Bako as a member of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission to represent the FCT. While looking forward for your usual expeditious consideration, please accept, Mr. Senate President, the assurances of my highest regards. You are sincerely, Muhammadu Buhari. The program is still inside the Senate and we are reviewing Senate activities for the week spanning Monday 5th to Friday 9th December 2022. So far, we have brought you the highlights of chamber debates and considerations of motions and bills at second reading. The program continues with a report from the Office of the Senate President where he received on courtesy visit the Minister of Agriculture and the Association of Veterinary Doctors in Nigeria on Thursday the 8th of December 2022. Let's get details of the issues raised. Insistent, persistent. In a welcome address, Senate President uh, Ahmed Lowell appealed for more support to the nation's livestock sector in the face of its economic potentials capable of generating revenue of between 34 and 35 trillion naira annually. Here you have um, a sector that um, has the potential of uh, boosting our economy by maybe 30, 33, 34, 35 trillion naira annually and yet it's neglected. Our livestock the others have not received a fair deal. 
all through our history. I will fight until our manifesto provides for our livestock subsector properly. Speaking earlier, the Minister of Agriculture lamented recent studies revealing that 29.1 billion Naira is lost annually to PPR, a highly contagious sheep and goat disease and expressed the fear that this figure may increase in view of the 130 million animal population in Nigeria. He then gave an insight into what his ministry has been doing since 2020 to support state veterinary services to address the problem. Between the year 2020 and 2021 alone, we have procured 12.5 million doses of PPR vaccines from NBRI for the nationwide mass vaccination. In the same vein, millions of doses of other vaccines against transboundary animal diseases have been produced and are being distributed to the state. Although the 2022 mass vaccination program has been flagged off in five geopolitical zones of the Northwest, Northeast, South South, Southeast, and North Central, while the remaining zone, Southwest, will be followed shortly. We are here today to also speaking, the national president of the Nigerian Association of Veterinary Doctors disclosed that in addition to their role in the control and prevention of diseases transmitted from animals to humans, they also play a significant role in public health. And this particularly in meat inspection to help guarantee that disease-free meat gets to the consuming public is worth mentioning, especially with routine reports of many encountered tuberculosis infected animals during meat inspection in abattoirs and slaughter slabs in almost all the 36 states of Nigeria and F FCT. During the visit, two awards were conferred on the Senate President. First was an award of excellence for his role in the control of PPR, a highly contagious sheep and goat disease. The award was presented by the Minister. The second was presented by the President of the Nigerian Association of Veterinary Doctors for his role in the development of veterinary medicine in Nigeria. We'll now take a break for our profile segment. Stand by for our Senator of the Week. Senator Emmanuel Okejef represents Benue Northwest Senatorial District under PDP. Born in Buruku, Buruku local government area of Benue State on the 15th of April 1963, he attended NKST Primary School between 1970 and 1976 for his first school living certificate, as well as Bristol Secondary School for his West African School Certificate WASC in 1985. He bagged an LLB from the University of Jos in 1988, attended the Nigerian Law School and was called to the bar in 1989. He served in various capacities as a lawyer in both the public and private sectors before joining politics in 2000. Senator Emmanuel Okeje was elected to the House of Representatives to represent Buruku Federal Constituency of Benue State in 2007 and served till 2019. Thereafter, he contested to the Senate in the 2019 general elections on the platform of PDP and won to represent Benue Northwest Senatorial District. In the Red Chamber, he is the Vice Chairman, Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, as well as a member of several other committees. His legislative interests are education, agriculture and security. With this, we come to the end of this edition of the program. Join us next week for more updates from the Senate Wing of the National Assembly. Thanks for watching.